said too many words last <laughs> Are you surprised? Too many words last period. <laughs> and those who weren't finished never got a chance to finish. And I don't want that to happen this period. I promised you a few minutes, and for golly, we're going to get a few minutes. So let me start off by saying, I'll let you in on my little secret. I like to tell you in advance so you know things. But not that it should change your behavior in any way whatsoever. But I'm not going to be here on Monday, which means that you're going to have stuff. Which means that in order for your group to get points, that sub better not mention me by name or anyone in your group by name. I better not have Ava played on her phone the whole time. Nick was ugly. Nothing. In order to get your five out of five, I need to have basically the children random. And if it says it doesn't, it doesn't say who was the problem that, that y'all were bad as a whole. Don't think I won't take points away as a whole. I will. There's no way you're getting your five out of five unless. You are all doing what you're supposed to be doing, which hopefully you will. just want to make sure you're aware of my expectations for you. Okay, and then the next thing I would say is that what stinks is that since I'm out on Monday, we're starting a new topic today, and then I'm leaving you a worksheet for practice today. Ah! So, bless you. So, we've got to make sure you get it as quickly as we can. Um, that way you don't mess up a worksheet. Now, the worksheet is two different pages, but the cool thing is um, they all, they're like a couple different puzzles, they all spell out something at the bottom. And I don't care when you figure out what it spells if you tell your friend. This is math class, though. So Tyler better have some math work on her paper. Now, I get that Daniel does some math in his head. He does not have to show his work on those that he can do in his head. I get that. But then there are some, like, they want you to plug in 6.5. He does not put 6.5 in his head. He is not that good. Boy. He thinks he, he is not that good. If it's a fraction or a decimal, my gosh, I'm surely you're going to show work then. My goodness. Okay. Also, there are new math workshops for next week. I'm going to leave her a note and say, like, go ahead and give it to them so they can have it in advance. But otherwise, we'll wait for me to go over them, and y'all can just work on your worksheet. Because it's two different pages, and it won't take some time. Okay, I am also that person, and I will leave this note on the board. But this is what happened last year, because Nick is so smart, but he doesn't read. So, Nick realizes I'm not here. He does all his work. He takes it home. When the bell rings, turn in your stuff on Monday, even if you're not done with it. I need to know that Cassidy was alive and knew a math and math class. Her work, even incomplete, lets me know she was alive and knew a math and math class. It is okay if you don't finish. Don't cry about it. You don't have to email me and tell me what happened. It will all be okay. You did your best, I assume, unless I read otherwise in my notes. But you've got to turn it in. Okay. I'm dying. Whew. Let's go ahead and go over these math workshops. And then I gave you a new pack of notes. But we're going to be rebellious today. We're not going to do just the notes. Instead of doing notes, boring old things, we're going to do a doodle notes instead. So I think it makes life a little easier. Okay, number three on the math workshop is a <laughs> a very sad, sad story about this lady named Anne who went on a ten-hour bike trip. How many miles did she go during her ten-hour bike trip? Look at the graph. How many miles did she go total? She went ten miles total. So that and she did ten miles in ten hours. So how many miles did she go in only one hour? One, exactly. So for our function, and I, I had a little help from everybody, so every group can have a point. For our function, we're going to put D of T equals C. So her miles, it was directly related to how many hours, where T is in hours. So in seven, seven, ten hours, good grief, she went ten miles. Ma'am. Did you say one hour, she only went one mile? Um, on average, since it took her on average the whole trip. It took her ten hours to do the full ten miles. Technically, on average, she did one mile per hour. But, I mean, did she actually only do one mile an hour? No, that's not it actually true. She took a break from hours four to seven. I guess she decided to take a nap. I don't know what happened. But from four to seven, she didn't move anywhere. So I don't know why she rode her bike for four hours. For, no, yeah, for four hours. And then rested until the seventh hour. And then super took off again. I don't know what she was doing, but that's what she did. We're not going to overanalyze it. I would love to overly analyze it because it's pretty interesting, but we ain't going to discuss that today. Okay. The next question is an easy one if you think about it. It asks if a graph of a relation, so if a graph, 
crosses the y-axis at more than one point is the relation sometimes, always, or never a function. So if it's crossing our y-axis twice, is it sometimes, always, or never a function? It would never be because if, yes, then you're going to have a point. Here's one graph that could cross the, the y-axis twice. Here's another graph that I made up that is super ugly and cross the y-axis twice. Regardless, it never happens. Never. And then it said to explain your reasoning. So we're going to go with that because of the pencil test, but I'm going to say vertical line test. But if you put pencil test, that is definitely acceptable. Line test. So it's never true. Look, those sometimes always are never normally seem tricky, but that one was actually straightforward. <coughs> okay, now for the notes. I know I'm normally the most colorful person ever, and doodle notes do imply that we get to color. However, we have got to start off with a pencil on this. Got to start off with a pencil. <coughs> okay, I'm going to apply, and not just because I want to give you time to do your test. Okay, I can't send a blank because that top blank is going to be subfunction. And then that next blank is subdomain, subpart, subfunction, subdomain. Never in my life have I heard, and I've had a lot of math classes, never in my life have I heard the term subfunction or subdomain until I saw these doodle notes. Never in my life. However, however, um, it's not that that's not useful. I just normally take the word piecewise very literally. Piecewise function implies it's made up of pieces. And that's what it's going to look like today. We put a bunch of random pieces together. We call it a function. And it looks like a hot mess. Um, so for our first example, they've actually already graphed it for us. We can talk about how they graphed it. So what they actually did, and, and I'm going to make a list of steps that we do today. So my first step, I'm going to write them down here, is that you want to draw a fence. So the first step we're going to do on any problem is draw a fence. And you're like, how do I know where to draw a fence? What does draw a fence mean? So let's go to this middle thing that explains the fences. So we're going to use a dotted line as a fence. And it's going to be like a border between territories. It's going to help us because then we're going to decide who is the owner of the fence. Okay, so I'm trying piecewise the pain in the rear. We're being honest. Graphing a piecewise function is tedious and time consuming, and most people get really annoyed real fast. So we're trying to keep it simple. So the first thing I do is I draw a dotted line, and I'm going to call that dotted line a fence. So for instance, on our first example, they say that we're going to graph these two different pieces, and they tell us about these different intervals, and I notice that the same number is on both intervals, negative two. So I'm going to draw my fence at negative 2. Okay, Miss Compton, you're crazy, but fine. We'll draw a fence. The next thing I do after I draw my fence is I graph I graph, but I use a pencil. Graph with pencil. Now, Ms. Compton, why do you have to use a pencil when you graph it? Because you and I are going to do some erasing. We're going to decide where to erase based off that fence we drew. But when we start off graphing, I graph the line like normal, and then I erase the part that's either below or above the fence. Okay, so for instance, back to this one. Um, we had two equations. So the first equation says 1 half x minus 1. So you and I both know... They went down to negative 1. They put their intercept. The slope was 1 half, so they went up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and then they went down 1, left 2, down 1, left 2, and that's how they ended up. Well, they ha originally had this giant line, and then they paid attention to that fence. We're really wanting this graph. I'm going to color it green. We're really wanting this graph. When we're below, and that was an ugly color, Miss Compton. We're gonna, or we really want this graph 
when we're below that fence. That's what that less than sign implies. So everywhere above that fence that I had graphed before, I'm going to erase it. And since we're already in this graphing mood, let's go ahead and graph this other line. I'm going to graph it in purple. They went down to negative 3. They put their point. It was 2. The slope was 2, so they went up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then they went down 2, left 1, and they... Can I not graph today? And they ended up having a graph that went way down here. But again, since our first step was draw the fences, they realized, hey, I'm only wanting that graph when I'm above negative 2, so to the right of that fence. So they erased everywhere else. So my first step is draw a fence. My second step is graph it with a pencil. And the reason we graph with a pencil is because I'm erasing the random stuff that's going too far beyond this fence. And then my third step is the funnest step of them all. You have to it, consider, I'm going to put consider, the points on the fence line. Okay, so what do I mean by consider the points on the fence line? And this goes back to what you learned about inequalities. There was a certain time when you were supposed to shade in stuff with an inequality. And there were certain times when you were supposed to not shade in stuff with an inequality. So step three is going back to inequality. So we have specific points that are living on that pink fence. And we're going to go back and look at them and decide, should we shade in that point or should we not shade in that point? So that's what step three is talking about. Are we shading in or are we not shading in? Okay, so, and again, they've already finished this example for us. So, it looks like with the green line, which was the top function, they decided to not shade in that fence line point. Why did they not shade in that fence line point? Yes, so we're going to go over here. If it's an open circle, which it was, it's because it was less than or greater than. Okay, so again, back to that green uh, fence point. We were trying to decide with this point, should we shade it in or should we not? And Karen's noticed it was just a less than, so that's why we did not shade in that fence point. However, the other one, the purple line's fence point, is a greater than or equal to, and we did decide to shade it in. So we shade in, we have a closed circle if it is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Karen, if you didn't add a point, you should. Okay, Ms. Compton, that all sounds great. <laughs> Maybe. Let's practice one. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom. We've got our own graph. Oh, no, we have three different parts to our piece, wise. It has three different pieces. So my first step is to draw a fence. There, I'm going to have two different fences. What is my first fence for this problem? Where's it at? It's a negative 3, and every group can have a point. I'm looking at my intervals. There's an issue at negative 3. So my first fence point, I'm going to put my line at negative 3. Something's going to change there. Maybe if I make it really bold, you'll pay attention to it. I don't know. That is a fence. And then I have another fence as well. Where's my other fence? It's a two. Look, that's where the other change is happening according to those intervals. So I'm going to put my fence point at two. I drew some really big fences so they would stand out for you. I hope yours are not as obnoxious. Okay, so again, those fences, this is just me trying to help Paige. Are the fences actually part of our graph? No. But those fences help Paige know, like, when to erase, when to bubble in. Those fences help her know that's where the important stuff happens. That's where you got to make your decisions. Okay, so the first, the top function is what we need to graph first. We'll do it in purple. Negative x minus 3. Well, in real life, you know my grid would have extended better. So that was negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I would have put my point at negative 3. And then my slope was negative 1, so i got to go up 1, and then to the left 1, left 1, up 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 
and I can go all day long. Okay, but again, we're specifically wanting so I can connect my dots, do the whole shebang if you'd like. Try at least. Not the prettiest I've ever done, but it'll do. But again, that fence line helps me know I really only wanted that line until we got to that fence. So everywhere that's technically below that fence, like over here, I'm going to erase it. Let me say that again. That fence line helps me know, yes, I do want this graph of this line, but I want it until I hit that fence. So everywhere below the fence, let's erase it. The five stuff below the fence. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to color it in now because I'm happy with it. But we get to this point directly on the fence line. So you and I did step one, we drew a fence. We did step two, we graphed and then we erased. And then at step three, we've got to consider this point. This point that's on the fence line. Am I going to shade it in or am I going to leave it open? I'm going to leave it open because ours is just a less than. Since it's not a less than or equal to, I'm going to leave it open. Are there any questions about graphing that piece? Okay, well, piecewise things, because we've got to graph a lot of pieces. That was the first of the three. Now to do the second. For the second of the three, I'll do it in green. It says we want to graph the line negative 2x plus 3. So I've got to go to 3 on my y-axis. 1, 2, 3. Put my intercept. And my slope is negative 2, so down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, up 2. Over one, up two, over one, up two, over one. And eventually Tylen is smart enough that she realizes, hey, I really don't have to keep graphing down here below that fence line. Like, I realize I'm going to come back and erase it in half a second. If I only want to draw the graph in between the two pink fences. Let me finish, sorry. Okay, so Tylen eventually is going to get smart enough that maybe she, she realizes the second she hits that pink line, I'm going to erase this anyway, so maybe I should have just stopped. I get you're smart enough for that. Me, sometimes i got to go a little further, hence why I do it in pencil, and I just erase. So everywhere that went too far outside the fence, I erase on this side. And what's sad about the middle guy is you have to do the same at the top. Everywhere that went too far on this side of the fence, we've got to erase. The darn middle piece is always a problem. Okay, so we only want the line negative 2x plus 3, I'm doing it in green. We only want that line when we're between these two fences. So we've got step 1 down, we draw our fence. we got step 2 down, we graph that line. Now we're back to step 3 again. we got to consider these points on the fence line. Both of them? Yes, they are both shaded because it's less than or equal to, and it's less than or equal to again here. I heard it from Nick and Karen, so 2 and 5. Get a point. Again, we're shading in because it's equal to. Okay, are there any questions about the green? And I could have been writing this in. My goodness, Miss Compton. So the purple was f of x is negative x minus 3. The green was the middle, so it was f of x is negative 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to do blue for the last one. The blue is going to be the, last, the bottom piece, f of x is 3. We're trying to fill in the doodle notes the way the doodle notes were meant to be filled. Then I guess I'll fill in all the boxes. I say that, I'm going to leave that little circle open for today, that is for sure. Okay, so our last one seems pretty easy. f of x equals 3 is just the straight line at y equals 3. So woohoo, straight line at y equals 3. But again, eventually Tylen's smart enough that she realizes, I really only needed the line y equals 3 everywhere to the right side of that fence. So me putting it over here, it's kind of silly. I knew not to do that. I knew I already had a graph over there. I knew it wasn't meant to cross that fence. I really, really needed it from here over. 
So that blue line is at y equals 3, and it's from here over. And now, again, so we've done step one, we've done step two, we're on step three yet again. We've got to decide, do we shade in this point on the fence line? And no, we don't, because it's just a greater than. Okay, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is look to the back. The good news is we're going to save that till next Tuesday. So, yay. You can put that doodle notes away, the ba the, but the for real bad news, get out your new packet. Get out your new packet. Uh, on your new packet, we're going to do one set of problems. So, if you understood how to graph that piecewise function, you are so smart. Graphic piecewise is a pain in the rear. But it's a it. Um, on Monday, your worksheet is not on graphing. It's on evaluating, and then there are some problems where you have to match a piecewise function to its graph, but does Nellie actually have to make the graph herself? No. She just has to match. Like, given this piecewise, which of these following graphs could it go to? It's just a matching thing. It's fine. Okay, so Ellie's looking at me like I'm crazy for piecewise. She might not like graphing, but she's going to stick and love evaluating. Evaluating is the best. Why is evaluating the best? We get to plug in, and we don't have to plug it into every piece. We can actually think things through. So we're going to do number one. It's the very front page of your thing. Again, those fence points are important to us. So note where those fence points are for this problem. And then they ask us about negative 2. Is negative 2 less than 0 or is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? Is negative 2, let me, Ellie, you can get a point, but let's get everyone else on board. Is negative 2 less than 0 or is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? Um, negative 2 is less than 0. So I don't have to plug it in that bottom function. I only plug it in that top function, so I have negative 2 squared which is positive 4. If Cooper plugs it into both pieces, or all three pieces, or whatever, he's wasting his time. You only have to plug it in the piece that it corresponds to. Where did we get this? They were on your desk when you walked in. Yours wasn't? No, we didn't. No, we didn't have that. that explains it. Daniel, here's one for you. Gilberto. Jason. Cooper. Okay, and while they're getting their packets, and we're still keeping the table three behind, so y'all can totally get some points right now. It asks us about zero. Do we pick the top function or the bottom function for zero? You pick the bottom one, and I saw it from table four first. So you pick the bottom one because it has the equal to zero. So we're going to do zero plus one, which is just one. And Amory is like, this is what my worksheet's like on Monday. I can do this. I can totally do this. And, of course, Avery realizes I picked the easiest example in the world. But it's okay. Okay, and then the last one on this example is 1. Is 1 less than 0 or is 1 greater than or equal to 0? It's greater than or equal to. So I'm going to do 1 plus 1. I'm going to plug it in the bottom one. And I get 2. Again, if Tylen's plugging it into more than one function, she's wasting her own time. You find which one it goes to and plug it in that one only. Okay, let's do number three again. It'll be super fast. We'll skip two. We'll go to three because it actually has three parts. On number three, they want to know about negative six. Do I plug it into the top, the middle, or the bottom? Paige said top. She said it fastest, so we're going to give her the point. We plug it in the top because negative six is equal to negative six. We've got to plug it in the top one. So nine minus negative six squared. Lo and behold, this is what everyone keeps making a mistake on. What is negative 6 squared? 36. Positive 36. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. So I'm going to end up with 9 minus 36, which is negative 27. I heard it from Daniel and Angel first, so 1 and 3. Nick and me were trying to do math in our head, and struggle's real. Okay, number 2 is my favorite on this part, the f of 7. Do I plug it in the top, middle, or bottom? Why the middle? And he explained that so well. Let's give him a point. 
It's greater than negative 6, but less than 8. So we plug it in the middle, and we'll have square root of 7 minus 3. So the square root of 4, which is just 2. And then the last one, f at 9, do we plug it in top, middle, or bottom? Bottom. And you know me, I'm cool with the fractions. So 3 over 9 plus 7, that's 1 third plus 7. If you change it to a decimal, that's okay. I like me some fractions. So I'm going to say 1 third plus 21 over 3. And I get 22 over 3. But Nick over here doesn't change it to a decimal, and that's okay. On my puzzle thing, pretty sure it's fraction. But he's smart enough that he can figure out which decimal goes with which fraction. He's that good today. So Ellie hates graphing piecewise, but darn evaluating them? Look at these flex. Okay, are there any questions about this? Then I have written something that seems scary on the board that says you're supposed to do page 23 and 25, which is the 